Hi guys, welcome to the second section of this course, Walkthrough Delegates. In this section, we are going to delve into the delegates that will be used a lot in functional c -sharp programming by getting introduced to delegates, taking a look at built-in delegates, and distinguishing variants in delegates. Great. Now we move on to the first video of this section, Introducing Delegates. In this video, we are going to take a look at the definition, syntax, and use of delegates and combining delegates into multicast delegates. Let's get started. A delegate is a data type in C-sharp that encapsulates a method that has particular parameters and return types, signatures. In other words, a delegate will define the parameters and the return type of a method. Delegates are similar to function pointers in C or C++, since both store the reference to the method with a particular signature. Like a function pointer in C or C++, a delegate keeps a memory address of the method it refers to. The compiler will complain if it refers to a function with a different signature. However, because of the unmanaged nature of the C++ language, one can point functions to arbitrary locations by casting. Let's take a look at this delicate syntax. I'll explain each element of the delicate syntax. Access modifier. This is the modifier that is used to set the accessibility of the delicate. It can be public, private, internal, or protected. However, we can omit it. And if we do that, the default modifier will be internal. Delegate. This is the keyword we need in order to initialize a delegate. Return type. A returning data type of the method we assign to this delegate. Delegate name. The identity of the delegate. Parameters. This is the list of parameters that the method we assign to this delegate takes. By referring to syntax, we can initialize the delegate. Take this code for instance. Single string delegate. Since we have the preceding delegate, we can assign a method processing the same signature to the delegate. The method will look like this, or the method can be like this. Since both methods have an identical signature, we can assign them to single string delegate using this syntax. Now the syntax is used to assign the assigned data method to a variable type single string delegate. And for the write to console method, we can use this syntax. It is common to name a delegate type ending with the word delegate, for example, single string delegate, in order to be able to distinguish the delegate name and the method name. However, it is not mandatory, and we can omit this. Moving on to simple delegates. For further discussion on delegates, let's take a look at the method, which we can find at simpledelegates.csproj. Take a look at this highlighted snippet. The rectangle method can be assigned to the delegate variable with the help of this code. This method can also be assigned to the area calculator delegate because the signature of the method, that is, Square method is what the delegate type expects. To assign a method to a delegate, we just need to create a variable of the delegate data type which has signature capability with the method to be assigned. This is our main method, which will create the delegate variable and invoke the method. We create two variables named rect and sqr, whose type is area calculator delegate. Since we have assigned the rect variable to rectangle method and sqr variable square method, we can invoke these methods using the delegate variable. Let's take a look at this code snippet. We assign variable i with the result of rect and j with the result of sqr. Although both of them are variable names, they refer to the method address location. One invokes a method referred by these variables to execute the logic contained. We are effectively executing the two console.write line methods to produce the output. Now let's run the code. We get i equal to 2 and j equal to 6. It is now clear to the reader why we display the output. The rec stores the reference to rectangle and sqr variable stores the reference to square method. We are effectively calling the rectangle method while invoking the rec delegate and square method, all the while invoking the sqr delegate. Now let's see multi-case delegates. We have just discussed a simple delegate where we assign a particular method to a delegate variable. We can call it a unicast delegate. However, the delegates can actually invoke multiple methods using one variable. For this purpose, we can call it a multicast delegate. In the case of multicast delegate, it is like a list of delegates stored inside an internal list. When we invoke a multicast delegate, the delegates in the list are synchronously called in the correct order. There are several ways to create a multicast delegate. The two we will discuss in detail are the delegate.combine and delegate.remove methods and the increment and decrement operators. Moving on to using the delegate combine and delegate remove methods. Let's first examine this code, creating a multicast delegate using the delegate combine method. Suppose we have a delegate named calculator delegate, as we can see, which we can find at combinedelegates.csproj. 
Then, we have these four methods that have the same signature as the calculator delegate signature. First one is add function, then subtraction function, multiply function, division function. We are going to cast these methods as add, subtract, multiply, and division in a single variable type delegate. Now, take a look at this highlighted method, that is, combine delegate method, to achieve this goal. If we run this method, that is, combine delegate method, this output will be displayed. Total delegates in calc multiplies 4. So, all our functions are working properly. We have successfully invoked four methods by calling a single delegate. The delegate we called in the code is in this code snippet. Actually, calc multiplies delegate has stored four delegates variables internally, corresponding to each of the method which we combined. Thanks to the delegate combine method, we can combine the delegates using this syntax. We can also create the array of delegates by calling get invocation list from the delegate variable. By retrieving the delegate array, we can iterate over the array like we do for ordinary arrays. We can retrieve the length property to count how many delegates are there in the invocation list. I've added this code. In multicast delegates, we are able to combine as well as remove delegates from the invocation list. Let's take a look at this remove delegate method. This is the entire code. Similar to the combine delegates method, we combine four methods into a single variable typed delegate in the remove delegate method. The calc delegates 3 is the delegate that keeps the four methods. Indeed, we invoke the calc delegates 3. It calls the four method in a proper order. Next, in the remove delegate method, we invoke the delegate.remove method in order to remove the selected delegate in the invocation list. Here, we first remove the moldel delegate variable from the invocation list. Next, we are displaying the output of the remove delegate invocation. Multiply method is no longer invoked right after it's removed from invocation list. Now, let's run the code. But first, we have to make some changes in the main function. We'll comment on the combined delegate function. And we'll write the function declaration for remove delegate function. Now let's run this function. So, this is the output. You can see the total delegates in calc delegates 3 is 4. And, in calc delegates 4, total delegates is 3, as we had used delegates.remove function. Notice that we don't have multiple function method as it is deleted. An invocation list associated with a delegate can contain duplicate entries. This means that we can add the same method to the invocation list more than once. Now let's try to insert the duplicate entries into the invocation list by adding the duplicate entries method to the project. I've added the duplicate entries function. This is the entire code I've highlighted, as you can see. In this code, we can see that the duplicate delegates2 variable contains three invocation methods, which are duplicate delegate1, having add del and sub del method invocation, and mol del. So, it has three invocations in total, add del, sub del, and mol del. Next, we add sub del to the invocation list of duplicate delegates3 and add del to the invocation list of duplicate delegates4. Now, the invocation list of duplicate delegates4 contains two duplicate methods. However, when we invoke the duplicate entries method, add del and sub del are invoked twice, and the invocation order is just the order in which we add the delegate to the invocation list. Let's now add function declaration for duplicate entries in main method. First, we'll comment remove delegate function, and then we'll write duplicate entries function declaration. Now let's run the code. As you can see in the output, add del and sub del method are invoked twice, and the invocation order is the same in which we added to the invocation list. Moving on to using addition assessment and subtraction assignment. It's quite easy to create multicast delegates addition assignment and subtraction assignment operators since that will be like treating any data types in C Sharp. We can also use the plus and minus operators to add and remove delegates in an invocation list. Here's the sample code we can find at add subtract delegates.csproj. We also have the four methods that is add function, subtract function, multiply function, and division function. We use them in the preceding project, combine delegates.csproj. We use this code in order to combine delegates and remove select delegates from the invocation list using the operator. Now let's discuss add subtract delegate function. In the starting lines of the add subtract delegate method, we create four variables of type calculator delegates, which are addDel, subDel, moldel, and divDel. 
We then create one more variable named multi-del of same type calculator delegate in order to generate the multicast delegate. Here we can see that we add the delegates to the multicast delegate variable using the operator only, in which we use the addition and addition assignment operators. After combining all four delegates into the multi-del delegate, we call in the multi-del delegate. And what we get on the output console display is the program to invoke the four methods in a proper order. The four methods are add, subtract, multiply, and division. To remove the delegate from the invocation list, we use the subtraction and subtraction assignment operators in the code. Let's take a look at this code snippet to examine what we have to do in order to remove the delegate. Since we have removed the subdel and the moldel delegates from the invocation list, the program only calls two methods, the add and division methods. When we invoke the moldel delegates, this proves that we have successfully removed the delegate from the invocation list using the subtraction and subtraction assignment operators. So now let's run the add subtract delegate method. See? First we are invoking all four methods in proper order. And then again, we invoke multi-del delegate, that is, after subtraction. The program only calls add function and division function. We have successfully removed subdel and moldel delegates from the invocation list. Splendid! That marks the end of this video. In this video, we got introduced to delegates. Good going.